going on, everybody? Welcome, Diecast. You are tuning in today to see part three of the Real Working Rigs Rock Through. And today is all about farmland and airport. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover the models that kind of coincide with those. So we're going to start out with this first one. Make sure we got enough space for this guy to rotate. So this is the crop sprayer. Uh, we got one of these in the main line that's uh, obviously much, much smaller. But uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, um, this one came out before the one in the main line. Um, I could be wrong. But this is a pretty unique casting. It's a generic, so it's, it's not a licensed casting. But... Um, this is really good. Uh, for those of you who are farm aficionados, um, you know, this is this is pretty close to being real. So it's not all cartoony and whatnot. I'll pull it up and take a look at it here. It's a relatively big model. Uh, looks really, really nice. These arms swing out. Let me show the deco on there. 760EX. Musterson, um, if this is licensed, guys, let me know, but I'm telling you, it's not licensed. It's pretty cool, though. Very, very nice. Um, swing around to the other side here. These arms swing out very, very, very far. So there's the deets there. Got your chrome tank on the top. It's a really nice model. Take a look at the back. There are no tampos or nothing on the back. So basically the way this works is, is these arms swing out um, just like you'd expect. And then on the back here, um, there is some adjustability and you can move the arms down. Um, so that way you can run your spray as you go up and down. Got all that nice ground clearance in there. Very, very big. Trying to do this without running into the camera. It's a very, very large um, piece on the back here. There are some tabs right here. So when you uh, bring this back end up, these little arms just sit in there just like that uh, to keep it from sliding out. It looks like all folded up. Take a look at the base here. Kind of have to look at this at the a different angle than normal. Uh, D27, that's when this model, this particular one debuted. This is Real Working Rigs number 27. For those who are interested, um, this is uh, one of the originals, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, it's a pretty nice model. Uh, second version, still pretty good. This one is in green. Uh, with the white sprayers. Now, one of the things that I want to note here. So this one, the sprayers sit perfect. Now these other two, um, just with the plastic and stuff, they just they don't sit quite right. So you can see how it's it's up, um, and it just they just they don't sit right. I'm not really sure. If they change something or if it's just the assembly or maybe they just use cheaper plastic, who knows. But this one, uh, just move this guy right out the way real quick. So this one gets some good detail on the tank. Try to get that focused in there. It's, uh, it's there very difficult with the uh, arm on it. So we'll just try to get these kind of moved out of the way. It's a 400 gallon tank. Um, I think the orange window looks pretty good on it. Master 120 is your Deco MC McCarthy. It's pretty cool. Uh, this is like a satin finish for the tank. So it's pretty nice looking. Uh, this one has the exact same functionality. Sprayers come down. Uh, it is enormously wide. There you go. Give you an idea just how wide. This model has a really good detail, the engine detail in there. Now, 
this one will go down but I can't the they they won't stay so even if I try to do that it just at least on mine you know you take a look at the bottom here so e01 this is a wrinkle black finish on the base it's pretty cool not as good as the first version for sure um Next version here, um, if I remember correctly, this was in a Mission Force pack. Um, I believe it was, if I remember correctly. So that's why the deck was a little, a little weird, because you know, with all the real working rigs, the the Mission Force sets were just just a little out there. They weren't bad, but they're just a little out there. Um, this one's not too bad. Um, but this one's pretty, pretty generic. You got Real Work and Rick's 27, and then you got a, uh, crop logo, um, on the tank. Very, very shiny. A couple of lines just for some detail. Uh, and then a red window, which is kind of the odd part. Um, but it's nice to still have the chrome tank. Um, so this one moves down. A little bit easier to see the engine detail on this one because it's gray. the top view so this one like i said this they just they don't <laughs> they just don't want to stay uh this one has a uh, gloss base f09 so this was the last time that they used this casting been a very very long time i don't know if we'll ever see this casting again but there you go there's the crop sprayer now Matchbox made plenty of, plenty of stuff for the farm. So we also have tractor. But these tractors also got a trailer. So technically, we'll have two models to look at. Now, the one thing that really bums me out is uh, when we look at the trailer, you can tell that this trailer was designed to have attachments and stuff made to it. They were definitely forward thinking with this. Um, unfortunately, uh, no attachments ever came out for it. Um, I would really hope that they would use this casting again. This is a very nice tractor for being a generic. Um, but it's, it's, it's very, very nice. I think that, um, for being a generic, it's, it's very, very appropriate. So we're going to take a look at the tractor first. Crown 1100 biodiesel. Uh, this is articulated so there you go c05 it's when it debuted super 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 gloss white I'm trying to see if i can get the real working rig number in there let me look at this other one oh it's oh man it's right by the rivet in the front there I think it's real working rig 12 here let's let's cheat real quick it might be easier to see on the black one yep real working rig 12 okay um actually i got these backwards guys so this one's first but we're going to just keep going with the green one because since i have it up not to make it confusing uh unit two here's the other side we got some good detail for the stacks I love the uh, the uh, caution triangle in the back. It's perfect. Exactly what you would see on a tractor. Nice big wheels. These are the same size wheels that were on that uh, crop sprayer. Just very good proportions to this. Um, the cool thing about this unit, so if you look at that front rivet, there's a part that's not painted. Um, it's actually this second piece here. They actually break this in half from the casting uh to make the front and the back of the base so that's a pretty cool detail i like that and then of course there's your trailer hitch on the back um just your simple pin down uh, here's your trailer so get this to focus there we go so your trailer just comes in and just slides right in just like that 
take a look at the trailer real quick. So the trailer has these, uh, whatever these are called for the farm guys. Um, but these are separate pieces, so they roll, which is pretty nice. Nice and low. So see, this trailer was designed to have a bed or attachment on the top. And I think that would have been really, really cool to have. Um, and then just leave the bottom parts off, which would have been pretty cool. So, but unfortunately, um, they didn't use this casting more than twice. So we never got any additional uh, attachments. Um, it'd be nice for them to bring this one back. We've only gotten two versions. Uh, the other version is in blue. Uh, so this is actually the first version. So I apologize to you guys. I got these ones backwards. The blue came out first, followed by the green. So your green one was C05. Set that guy off. And this one is going to be... It's crazy glare. It's B46. Uh, so this, call, this is technically called the Mega Tractor. That is its technical name. Uh, this one's better than the other one. This is five, uh, my favorite version of the two. So it just says JSE 4000. This looks really, really good, man. This definitely looks like a, a very real tractor. I think they did a fantastic job. I mean, look at it. It's almost all metal, too. Uh, just the cab is plastic. So that's a really nice thing. That's probably one reason why we probably won't see this come back is because there's too much metal in this casting and of course still has that warning triangle on the back which is perfect trailer is the exact same trailer as the other one uh just different colors molded in black with the blue uh, exact same style wheel but this wheel is uh much much smaller you can see here so but it's it's appropriate it's pretty nice pretty nice um However, when it comes to tractors and farm and all that good stuff, uh, nothing is as good as the Owl Time OG real working rig. And that is this big boy. Uh, this is probably the most intricate, most involved, uh, most over the top real working rig they ever made. Um, this model actually requires quite a bit of assembly when you buy it. Um, they only made this version, they only made this casting twice and, uh, you know, I really, really, really wish they would bring this one back. Even if they brought this one back in the exact same decos with the same attachments and all that stuff, I would still be okay with it because this is such a phenomenal casting. Um, this is one of the best real working rigs in my opinion. Uh, so this one has an enormous amount of features. So um, I'm going to have to get two hands in here. So for starters, um, this unit is rotates, obviously. Uh, the unit also goes up and down. Um, then you can also remove the unit entirely. So the unit pops off. There's the attachment in the front. Uh, when this model is new, uh, you have to attach the stairs. So the stairs are a separate piece. There's a slide in the front. Additionally, you have to assemble the wheels as well. So it's the exact wheel. Um, it's just made to slide over the other one to get that dual wheel set up. Um, and that is just so freaking cool. So freaking cool. Great details on the cab. You got the case up there. Um, this is a plastic insert, but all the red is metal. Um, on the top here, here's your hopper. Um, this piece also comes off. Um, but if you don't have to assemble this, but I'm just saying all these pieces come off. They're relatively easy to, to move around and whatnot. So if you guys want to customize one of these, um, that's a very easy thing. And then, of course, you have your chute. So um, the one thing that I don't like about the chute um, is that it kind of droops a little bit. Um, just the way it's kind of mounted in there, but it works. It works. Um, so this is the this is the case harvester. This is obviously a licensed model. 
uh, number 7088. I believe that's the unit number. Um, axial flow. There it is from the back side. Got some print on the back. We don't have print on that uh, warning triangle, but that's that's okay. Um, everything folds up very nicely. Very compact unit, just like it should be when it's not being used. We'll just go ahead and assemble this back up. So we just take this, slide it right in the front. There you go. And then this piece is just uh, got little notches in there. Make sure it's aimed the correct direction. And then it just snaps on there. Just like that. You can drive around with it up. It's pretty sweet, man. This is a uh, this is real working rigs at its best. Now, I said they made this version or they made this model twice. Um, and just real quick, um, this model debuted. Get your base coat on here. Oh, this guy's not quite snapped in there. There we go. Uh, this one is real working rig number 13. And this one was C37. I never noticed they had the Thailand surrounded the logo. That's kind of cool looking. <laughs> All right, so here's the second version. Now, the only difference between these two is the attachment on the front. Now, my assumption is that Case told them, hey, uh, you could only do red which is fine. Um, but I wonder if maybe they could do like red hubs or black hubs or something like that. They could change up the wheels to make it you know, a little bit different. A little bit different. But regardless, it's a new attachment. This one is for... First one was a wheat uh, harvester. I believe this one is for corn. Uh, this one's significantly smaller, uh, but it still comes off. And then, of course, it's still... Uh, it has some movement, not as much as the other one, but it does have some movement to it. It's a giant piece of plastic, but that's okay. Uh, this one is D45. So in case you guys are wondering when this one was released. Like I said, same exact unit number. Axial flow. Same prints on the back. Case. It's pretty nice. Definitely a very nice one. Very, very nice one. All right, now, that covers farm. There's not a whole lot of farm. Now, just so you guys know, you may be looking at this and saying, hey, well, that's that's kind of a farm tractor. It is, but I feel like this is going to fit in a separate segment, so we're going to hold off on those guys. Um, the reason I don't have any farm ones up here is because I don't have any farm ones that are blistered. So, no backdrops. Now, we're going to move on to... The airport, because why not go to complete opposite end of the spectrum? Um, this is the Colet K30E Jaguar airport pumper. One of the most unique fire apparatuses you'll ever see in your life. Um, if you guys have never seen one of these, you should, you should look up on uh, Google and see what a real one looks like. They're nuts. They're nuts. Um, I like that they made this because it's a very unique, it's very real working rigs. However, there's like zero working features to this. There's like no working features. So, um, you have your sprayer that goes up, um, only one notch and then your nozzle moves a little bit. That's it. That is the a hundred percent extension of this. That's it. Now, the good thing is, is that most of this model is metal. There's a ton of metal in this model. Um, the tank is chrome, which is really nice. Got some really good tampo prints on the side. Airbase 52, R8. Very unique from the front. Very unique. It's a center-driven center unit. Uh, this is actually a relatively large unit in real life. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty big. Really good details on the back. Just a very interesting, interesting unit in real life. There you go. Everyone home safely, always. That's definitely what we want to do. 
get that to focus a little bit. Man, focus is killing me these days, guy. Take a look at the base here. Flip this guy over. So C27 is when this one debuted. This is real working rig number 18. There's the logo. It's pretty cool because they actually put the actual logo on the bottom, which is pretty cool. Other than that, no other details. No other details to be had here. Um, and then just the, the painted details of the sprayer. Just a little extra spray, a little extra detail. Just a little bit. Uh, second version, uh, way, 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 way better deco. Way better deco. I don't really feel like they could have done much with this other than just making some really cool decos because, like I said, it doesn't really do that much working part. Um, this is another model that I think we probably won't see come back just due to the sheer amount of metal that's in it. It's it's a pretty heavy model. It's pretty heavy. It's not quite on the level of uh, Hot Wheels Greyhound bus heavy or uh, an all-metal drag bus heavy, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. This one is a awesome deco. So, first response, unit number two. Still R8 on the tank. Emergency services. Warning stand clear. Got the Colette up there. Logo on the window. Same details on the front window there. Move around to the other side. It's the same. This is a like inkjet printing. And then this is like a normal like pad printing. It's, it's an odd combination. Um, this is really cool. American flag on the back. Because Merca. All about Merca. And D12. Uh, no, not Eminem D12. The year D12. Um, I don't know what this uh, code is that's on the metal there. Maybe somebody can chime in. It's really cool. Uh, we got one more model here for the Colette. Um, this one, I believe, if I remember correctly, came in a Mission Force pack, which explains why this one's a bit of a departure deco-wise from the rest. Definitely out there. Um, the Red Hubs are good. This deco looks good, but you can tell this is not, you know, this is not something that you would definitely see in real life. Versus the other two, which you we'd probably see them, probably see them. I just don't see think you'd see the red the red hubs on this. Uh, very dark window, very dark window. Still all the good details in there. I don't know if you can if you can get that yellow. I don't know what it says. Um, it does say R eight rescue fire rescue in there. It's kind of a ghost kind of thing. You know all my fingerprints on there. Uh, matchbox we're working rig 18 classified so if i remember this was in like the ufo mission force pack if i remember correctly uh, no print on the sprayer for this version also no print on the front obviously there's cost cutting for the mission force packs um and no print on the rear as well and then just i didn't show you guys from the top but there you go it's pretty nice like I said, it's a pretty heavy model, pretty substantial. Uh, most of the weight's in the back here. So uh, this one is E20. So there is your base code. All right, now. If you're going to put out a fire, that means there has to be something to be lit up. And... That means there has to be something to supply the planes, I guess, I think is where we're going here. Uh, this is the uh, GMC T8500 scissor truck. This is, uh, man, This when this came out, this was like one of my favorite war working rigs at the time. Because it was just, it's such a cool idea. And, you know, everybody who collects Matchbox knows about the Ford scissor truck and you know, it had all the same features this guy does, and just you know, it's just super super cool. Um, there's this thing does have one feature that, or I'm sorry, it lacks one feature that the scissor truck had, but it gains a bunch of other ones. So there's got to be a trade-off. Uh, this was its debut deco. 
and Samson Cuisine. Private and commercial global custom gourmet catering. There's your details on the cab. I don't think this is a licensed deco. I really don't. Uh, the Tampa print on the front is awesome. Just so subtle but perfect. Love it. You know, the good thing about doing this GMC, technically the, the chassis is they could probably put any back they want on this and would have been fine. Now, this is the one thing I was saying that it, it lacks. So the back doesn't open, but it more than makes up with that with some other features. And we'll get to that in just a second. I'm going to show you the base here. Real working rig number 24, D12. There is your deets on the bottom, 2010. Now, this model, obviously, scissors. And there's a little stopper in there that keeps it from falling down, no matter what. Now, once you lift it up, then this will come down. A lot of plastic here. There you go. So this will give access to the crew quarter, I guess you could say, to get into the uh, base there. Just trying to get the, there we go. Trying to make it look good for you guys. You know, I want the plastic to line up. So this is the part that we drive up to the plane with. So you'd be pulling units from inside here, taking them out on this platform. And this platform also slides out. And slide out super far and it does come out if you want to pull on it but that pulls out too it goes right up to your plane so it's pretty sweet just a click back in spot there there you go there's the underside uh this gray part is metal and so is the cab there we go sorry about that and uh the base is plastic and then of course the whole unit up here is plastic so that's what it looks like just chilling just rolling around i really like this model i think this is uh you know the team looking outside the box and not doing your typical bulldozer and your typical excavator and your typical tow truck and fire truck and you know the stuff that you would expect to see in this line um they they went kind of way off the deep end with this one and i think it's perfect i think it's absolutely perfect now we did get a second version of this model so we're gonna slide that in we're going to bring this down. There we go. So here's our second deco. And snacks and beverages. City's best snacks and beverages. Um, I don't think that this one's licensed either, but it could be. It could be. This one's a little bit of a more kicked back deco. The first one is like straight up exact let's go for realism this one's a little bit more flexed so there's all your cities in there and yes even denver's in there because maha city uh i mean they didn't skim on this one at all you still have your good detail on the front i like the green uh i'm not a particular fan of the gray uh it should have been white in my opinion i do like that they color match that second section that's in metal uh, the first one looks good in gray, but this one looks, looks good color matched. And of course, you know, still has all your same features, same moving stuff still has the same platform that comes down. Um, I feel like the plastic got a little bit softer with this one cause the, all the parts move a little bit easier. Um, but they still stay exactly where they're supposed to go. So slide that up, slide that down. Boom. Now we got one more model to cover. And I kind of left it for the last because it's, besides the Combine Harvester, this is the best of the bunch. This is the Oshkosh plow truck, airport plow truck. Um, this is a P-Series. This is a big old honking bastard. The big guy, the big huge dude. Um, this model is pretty cool because the... The blade comes like above the, the, the truck and the blister. It's pretty cool. Uh, this has a enormous amount of features too for what it is. I mean, you think snow plow, you're like, oh, it's got a plow. The plow moves, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but this one's, this one's definitely something different. So 
Um, obviously, your your plow is going to move left and right, and it's an enormous plow. Uh, it also moves up and down. And then you can remove this whole piece if you don't want the plow in there at all. So you just pop it down. You can drive without the plow in it. So we'll set the plow to the side just for the purpose of showing the truck. Showmanville City Works. Um, that's a logo. That's the license logo you see on all the Oshkoshes. Uh, such a good casting. This is such a good casting. I can't even tell you guys how good this casting is. Uh, some detail on the side of the mud flaps there. Hubs are painted. Looks good. Nice detail on the back. Especially if you want to open it up. Dump some salt. Looks really, really good. Go to the other side. Got a nice chrome stack. Very, very, very nice. Got a chrome grill. Such a good casting. And it's beefy. It's beefy. So there it is. Now, of course, it's a dump truck. So it dumps. So that is the dump. And then, of course, the back opens up. Because... Of course it does. It looks really, really good as a dump truck too. Just such a good casting. Now, there's quite a bit of metal. Obviously, the bed is all plastic. The little uh, pneumatic types, you know, holder for the thing is is a uh, plastic as well. However, um, just that center part of the base is plastic. The tanks on the outside that's metal. There's a metal piece that runs down the length of the body. Is, is or I'm sorry, there's a piece that runs down the middle of the body, which is metal. And uh, it's just, it just leads some some good, good solid, solid work here. Man, this, this zoom is going to, the zoom is going to be the end of all things. All things. All right. We got a couple versions of this plow. Oh, you know what? Almost forgot, guys throw this up here so this is a real working rig number 17 c36 is your base code on this one there is the name there's another version this one is in orange which is way more iconic way more iconic and uh it's got a yellow plow i really wish the plow would have been orange i really really wish it would have been orange um all the versions match plow wise except for this one and i think this one would have been the best version um you know this version matches the cab but it doesn't match the overall unit so i really wish it would have been uh really wish it would have been orange just saying so there are the deets it's very very toned down uh just plain plain deco no city, no nothing on it, no, no craziness. All it's good, good glory. I just love how simple it is, but yet how unbelievably detailed it is. Um, on the base here, let's put this guy around. Sorry, guys. Uh, C22. So this guy will give you C22. Uh, we got one last version that we're going to pull up. And this one is in red, fully matching, 100%, very, very nice, love it. Uh, Risha would have had red hubs, that would have been cool, that would have been really cool, but it doesn't. Man, that plow is such a big piece, it's such a huge piece, it's like the length of a car, it's like the length of a matchbox car, it's crazy. Pull this up and look at it. So this is Northern Commons City Services, number seven. Still have that awesome detail on the hood. They all do. That could have been requirement, but regardless, it looks good. They all have that wrinkled black base, which is really, really nice. All the same details. Man, it's such a good model. Such a good model. Take a look at the base here. Uh, so this one, I was looking at it, and I was really trying to dive into there, but I can't find a base coat on this one. So 
Unfortunately, I can't help you guys out with the base code on this particular model. But the rest of them were there. Um, and I believe this was the last one to come out, um, if I remember correctly. So, so there we go. So there we go. We're covering real working rigs. In this part three, we covered the airport and the farm. So hope you guys enjoy that. Hope you guys like those models. Hope you guys like the combine because that one is flipping sweet. And then, of course, the next best one is the snowplow. Kind of throw those guys up there a little bit. And we're going to roll out. This guy's trying to roll off. So, appreciate it. Catch you guys next time. Level M Diecast. Peace.